Prove that if the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. Okay, let's go ahead and draw the diagonals. Because you know you're going to need them. Wow, that one missed the corner, didn't it? And we're going to do that one. And that one didn't miss the corner really as badly. And we'll put point E in the middle. So we'll say this is A, B, C, D, E. And they gave us a parallelogram. Okay, they, they said this is a parallelogram. And they also told us that BD is congruent to AC. So there's, there's some givens here. And those givens are going to come in very handy. Now, here's what we also know, because it's a parallelogram. I'm going to go ahead and start labeling some stuff. We know that this side is equal to that side in measure. And this side is equal to that side in measure. And we also know that BD is equal to AC. It's going to get cluttered if we try to list that. But they, we know that because that's what they've given us. So if this is true. So when they say if this is true, then they're giving us a parallelogram with diagonals that are congruent. And now we're going to have to go and prove it. So <clears throat> we have consistently for the past couple proofs been using um, one of the, here we go, here's that list again. One of the ways of finding triangles congruent and SSS, SAS, angle, side, angle, 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 side. And I would say hypotenuse leg, but we don't know for sure that these are right angles yet. They are, but we don't know that for sure, air quotes. So let's, well, let's about to put that list away. Let's not. Let's see what we can deal with. Um, let's see, side, side, side. Well, I do have sides, sides, and I know the diagonals are congruent. Actually, I'm going to go about this a little bit differently. See this triangle right here? I'm gonna prove that it's congruent to this triangle right here. Trust me on this. And if you're like, oh, I don't know where he's going, it's okay. Experiment with it yourself. Part of the fun of proofs, and yes, they're fun. Part of the fun of proofs is just thinking, well, where can I go with this? And what logical argument can I present here? All right, so we're gonna do that. This is not the only way to do it. This is what I'm gonna do. And I'm in charge. All right, number one, what do we know? Well, if I'm gonna go all SSS on you here, then I gotta start listing sides that are congruent. And I know that BD is congruent to AC. And I know that based on, they didn't directly state, oh, this is given. But I know it because that was, well, given. Prove that if this is true. So that, yeah, it's true. So this is given. They told us that the diagonals are congruent. All right, number two. We need another pair of angles that are congruent. Oh, there's a pair of sides that are congruent. So AB and CD. So we can say that AB is congruent to CD. And we know that because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Okay, good to know. Here's option number three, not option number three. We have side side. Let's get another side. And you were like, BC and AD, I hear you, but I'm not. I'm not going to go there. You can if you want to. I'm going to go AD is congruent to itself. <laughs> that looks pointless, but I need to list it because I'm about to say, well, well, let's give the reason for that one. This is the reflexive property. Of actually of congruence. In a previous video, I had done this in sort of reflexive property of equality, and I am not going to redo that video, but I am going to change that right now. <laughs> there we go, of congruence. Slight difference. There we go. All right, moving along. Number four. What's step number four? Well, we just said sides are equal, sides are equal, the side is equal to itself. So we have two triangles that must be equal to each other, and then we're going to start with B. B, A, D is congruent to, all right, match the parts. Triangle C, D, A. And we know that because of side, side, side. Well, because we know that, we also know some other stuff, and here's what we know. We now know that this angle in this corner is equal in measurement to this angle in this corner, the big angle. So I'm gonna say that angle bad is congruent to angle kada, 
And I know that because the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Just to visualize it a little bit better. I know that this angle is equal to this angle. Okay? Now you're like, but they're right angles. Measure them as right angles. Yeah, whatever. Just work with me here. And, and I do know, I know they're right angles, and you know they're right angles, but we're proving that they are truly right angles. <clears throat> Actually, we're not going to prove that they're right angles. We're going to prove that they are all four congruent, which taking it an extra step or two to make sure they're all 90 is a different issue, but yeah. All right, so we know that this angle, swoosh, is congruent to this angle, swoosh. Clearly 90 in our picture. We're not going to make that assumption right now. But that's because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So if BAD is congruent to CDA, then these must be the same. And these angles must be the same. And these angles up in the top corner must be the same. And there's all kinds of parts. Six, to be exact. All right, so now that we know that BAD is congruent to CDA, we can do some other stuff with this. Now, I'm, I'm going to go a little crazy on you here. Here's something else we know, right? Right? We know that. And here's how we know that. Now, hold on to that red pen. We know that angle bad is congruent to angle DCB. Ah, let's not put the comma yet. Trust me on this one. But the reason for that is because opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. Well, all right, while we're at it, same step. We're gonna do two of them in one. We're gonna say swoosh right there. And that swoosh is CBA is congruent to the one over here. Opposite or congruent, right? So angle ADC. Ah, all for the same reason. All right, so now we have this big, big thing where we're saying that bad and DCA are the same. Now, if we took out the diagonals, we could just use one letter, right? So just for just a moment, for the sake of explanation, let's take out the diagonals. So I have A, B, C, and D. We have already made the determination that these are the same. And then we said A is equal to C and D is equal to B. So because A equals D and D equals B and A equals C, we can use the transitive property until we throw up and we're gonna end up with A equals B equals C equals D. They're all the same. Let's do that. <clears throat> angle bad is congruent to angle CDA is congruent to angle D, C, A, B is congruent to angle C, B, A. How do you know that? I said so. <laughs> Transitive property. Of congruence. All right. Transitive property, just in case you forgot, is uh, the situation that says that if a equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Just saying. All right, and we have done that. Well, you've probably done that in other things. Um, <clears throat> actually, we did that in the very first problem. Yeah, so yeah, you saw that. Um, <clears throat> the very first proof we did. <coughs> well, now that we've said that all four angles are the same, we have a rectangle. Because the definition of a rectangle is a parallelogram with four congruent angles. So, um, Parallelogram A, B, C, D is a rectangle. And the reason for that is because all four angles are congruent, and this is the definition of a parallelogram. Therefore, we figured it out. Therefore, if the diagonals of a parallelogram are congruent, then the parallelogram is a rectangle. Done.